help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description. If you were to look at the reason behind the creation of mankind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a few things primarily. He says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinnkind except for them to worship me, for them to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Primarily, that's the purpose of creation. Now, people might have questions. Those questions will be answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the day we meet him. What I know, what you know is I am here now and I did not choose to be here. Someone put me here. None of us chose to be here. Someone put us here. We will also not choose to die. He will take us back when the examination is over because one of the other purposes is to be able to worship Allah through the tests that he puts us through in our lives. This is why nobody's life ever has been free of tests. You need to think about what I just said. Listen to what Allah says. أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَن يُتْرَكُوا أَن يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Does mankind think that it's sufficient for him to just say that you know we are believers or for mankind to say we are believers and then it's okay? I say I'm a believer and I'm not going to be tested. Allah says, does man think we're not going to test him? We will definitely test him just like we tested those before him in order to distinguish who has passed the test, who was truthful and who was not truthful. You say you believe. Okay, we're going to give you things. Do you still believe? Has it humbled you? Has it brought you closer to us? If it has, Alhamdulillah, good for you. Nothing was decreased from the kingdom of Allah. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ says, if everybody had to ask Allah whatever they wanted from the beginning of mankind to the end of mankind, and Allah was to give every single person every single thing they asked for, it would not displace from the kingdom of Allah, except that which a pin displaces when it's thrown into the ocean. That's Allah. So what did Allah lose? Nothing. What did Allah gain? Nothing. It's you and I who, who are gaining or losing. Similarly, you need to know another thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We will definitely test you. If you look at the wording of that verse in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says, We will definitely indeed very, very confirmed and stressed. When I say stressed, I mean Allah has actually said it in a very strong way he has given it great significance he says we will definitely test you with what number one test fear al khawf what type of fear not necessarily one type of fear all types of fear you're worried about your health you're worried about your food you're worried about your drink you're worried about your safety you're worried about security you're worried about the enemy you're worried about animals you're worried about electricity you're worried about water you're worried about eco cash you're worried about everything else Allah says we will test you it's a worry it's a concern it's definitely a worry in this country we're going through difficulty but I want to let you know it's not the only country the most developed countries at this juncture are going through great challenges, huge challenges of a different nature. Subhanallah. Allah says, we will test you with fear. What are you worried about? Someone asks you, what's your greatest fear? You have a long list of things to say. I'm worried about this, that. How long have you been worried for? I promise you the last 20, 30 years, right? Who carried you along? Allah. He carried you along. I promise you, you are in a better condition. You are, you know, you are in a better condition today than you were in the past. And we're still worried. Subhanallah. When we, when we had nothing, we were worried. Now we've got something. We are more worried. <laughs> Why is it? Because the reliance is now on what we have, no longer on Allah. That's where the problem is. You see what we're saying? Rely on Allah. Allah says, don't worry. You don't have the, the morsel, the next morsel, we will give it to you. But that test of Allah is supposed to be bringing you closer to Allah. He tells you in Surah Al-Baqarah, he didn't even say it later on in the Quran, right at the beginning, Surah Al-Baqarah. He's saying, we're going to test all of you, every one of you with what? 
be shay in min al khawf with a little bit of fear you will be scared sometimes i explain to you all sorts of different types of fear wal jua and hunger you can understand that on your own hunger sometimes you will be hungry sometimes there may not be food sometimes there will be famine sometimes there might be money and no food and sometimes there will be food and no money and sometimes there will be neither food nor money that's a lot subhanallah jua wal khawf al khawf wal jua wa naqs min al amwal you will suffer loss when you suffer loss do you say alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah allah says you will suffer loss of wealth naqsin min al amwal your money boom suddenly one day someone stole it there was a fire there was a robbery there was an earthquake there was what's all this about allah says that's the whole reason why we sent you onto the earth man don't be fooled you know people say you came onto the earth just enjoy and when you have a lot of money and a nice house and everything is smooth it means allah is happy with you not at all no ways allah says we need to test you look at your school your school to start with how many of us are educated here we'll put up our hands all of us even the little ones will say we go to school what school all about exams tests do they become easier or more difficult they become much more difficult as you become closer and closer higher and higher to the you know to the end much more difficult you're writing o level you can't take a kid and put them right up there because you know that's going to be a difficult exam but when you go through it what do you say you come out of the paper and you say alhamdulillah it was easy mashallah thank allah it could have been worse so allah says we sent you to test you nobody can deny that nobody people say how could allah send us here to test us i tell you i'm not here by my own will i'm here by the will of allah i'm not your brother because i chose to be that allah chose it for me i'm not in your community and meeting you here today because because i wanted it no allah wanted it primarily then perhaps he gave me the ability to a certain extent so there is going to be a challenge as you grow older once or twice a year you get ill you have a cough you have a headache you have you know something wrong with yourself an allergy whatever whatever it's part of the test of allah it proves to you that what allah is saying is right wa naqsim min al amwal wal anfus allah says we will take away the life the life of what of who people around you whom you love perhaps people around you whom you see and witness family community whoever else however we want to take it we will take it people say why are innocent children dying the one who gave them the life loves them more than the people who gave birth to them remember that the one who gave them the life loves them more than the those who gave birth to them people say the mother's love is the highest actually allah's love is higher than that so why did they suffer that's a question i tell you go back to the to the reason of creation you will know it's part of the test Allah is testing you who remain behind. Do you understand Allah's plan? They might be the means of your entry into Jannah. If Allah knows that there is a little child who's going to grow up to suffer beyond a certain degree, Allah may take them away earlier. If Allah knows that there is a child who's going to grow up and make someone else's life a misery, perhaps the parents' life a misery, Allah might take them away earlier in a car crash where they may not have died in a way I would have liked or you would have liked, but they died in a way Allah wanted. And if you bear the patience, you pass your test, you walk out of there, you might be sad, but you Allah will give you Jannah because you were patient. and had they remained and had they been given life perhaps you would have said oh allah look at my son he's hassling me he's troubling me help me i'm really depressed subhanallah allah says we will always do you a favor you don't know the future we know the future the knowledge of allah is so powerful ya'lamu ma kana wa ma yakunu wa ma lam yakun idha kana kayfa yakunu allah knows that which was that which will be you know the past the present and future those three allah knows but there is a fourth category of knowledge that is the most supreme that is only for allah you know what it is try to understand what i'm saying allah knows what will not happen in the future if it were to happen how it would have happened subhanallah say you don't have a child allah knows that if you had one and you're not going to have one what would have happened had you had one he will show you that one day if you want to see it perhaps that look we didn't give you because of x y and z not only that 
even if it's a business deal sometimes there is a million dollar deal and it's so close to you and it didn't come to you sometimes you want to get married to someone so desperately and you think everything is smooth and this person is blocking no 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 Allah knows that which is not going to happen if it did happen how it would have happened that's what Allah knows we read Surah Al Kahf every Friday a lot of us I promise you in that surah there is something very powerful regarding the meeting of Musa alayhi salam and Al Khidr when Al Khidr decided to kill the little boy later on there was an explanation to say had he been given life he would have been so disobedient to his parents Allah said take that life away don't worry we will replace him with a better child subhanallah the child never ever grew up so Allah knew this child is not going to grow up but if the child had grown up which didn't ever happen was never going to happen Allah says we know what would have happened Allahu Akbar it's a little bit too deep you need to think about what I'm saying <coughs> this is why the affairs of a believer are amazing the reason why I'm repeating this type of topic is because we're going through a lot of hopelessness on earth people don't realize why am I not coming right well nobody is coming right actually so what is coming right if you could read salah that day you have come right if you have obeyed Allah you have come right if you have thanked Allah against all odds you have come right that's what that's what is right right is not about your food and your your money and everything else which everyone thinks today when you ask someone house things they will tell you very tough what are they talking about they're talking about materialism only but the true answer is Alhamdulillah today I read Salah today I managed to get up for the Hajjud today I did Fajr today mashallah I did this and those are the real answers I managed to read Quran I managed to obey Allah I thank Allah he gave me one avocado subhanallah on my tree La ilaha illallah where are those that's why on the day of Qiyamah there will be a caller who is going to call Aynal ladheena kanu yahmadoon Allah fi sarra'i wa darra where are those who used to thank Allah in tough times and in good times? Bring them, come forth, VIPs. When you had a tough situation, instead of saying any bad words, you said, Alhamdulillah, it could have been worse. It's just like that exam I told you about just now, O level. You walked out, what did you say? Hey, it was all right, it could have been worse. The same happens with us. You have a massive accident. It's your test. You walk out with one broken limb. Say, Alhamdulillah, it could have been worse. I could have lost an eye. You lost one eye. I could have lost both eyes. That is a mu'min. It's a believer. Allah says you are great. You are here to be tested. Don't become despondent because of one or two challenges in your life or a hundred or a thousand challenges. And you need to know another thing the Prophet says, the more Allah loves you, the more tests he puts in your life. Something you think, what just happened here? You cry. Allah says, I love those tears. Why? You are now relying on me alone, no longer on anything else. I told you when we didn't have, wallahi, our reliance on Allah was greater than now that we've got a little bit. Allahu Akbar. This was the condition of the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They thanked Allah. They were thankful. And yes, it's a test of Iman. That's why we are here to talk about it regularly. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to ask, when is the help of Allah coming? The messengers of Allah used to ask, when is the help of Allah coming? Allah says, we'll shake you to test you. What is your limit? Then we will take you across to Jannah. My beloved brothers and sisters, don't lose hope when you go through some sort of difficulties, trials and tribulations in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test everyone and Allah says in Namal Husri Yusra with hardship comes ease. So if you want to become someone successful, if you want to achieve something in this dunya, you need to work hard, you need to have some hardship, you need to struggle sometimes. And time after time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will test you so that Allah will make you stronger by these tests, by these lessons, by these struggles. And Allah tests those people whom he loves so when you are going through some sort of struggle some sort of trials and tribulations don't think that allah is punishing you the problem or the trial that is bringing you closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not a punishment it's rather a reward because 
with that you are strengthening your bond with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are praying to allah you are praying tahajjud you are praying your five daily salah on time you are reciting the quran you are giving charity and you are becoming a better person so these tests and trials are making you better so never become depressed or never lose hope when you are going through some not permanent these are primary temporary trials and tribulations and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remove it from you sooner than later so don't be worried don't be sad don't lose hope and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shower mercy and blessings on you allah will make things easier for you allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open the doors of opportunities for you continuously make dua to allah and work hard to solve the problems that you are going through according to your own means and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do the rest for you may allah forgive our shortcomings may allah give us the understanding of this deen may allah make things easy for us may allah give solutions to all the problems that people are going through and may allah grant us jannatul firdaus al-a'la help us build an islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org link in the description